you. And then you know right then the comfort in your life. You know what the word comfort? Somebody that comfort. Somebody that, that is there. He's the third part of the Godhead Trinity. Amen. Confused if you want to. Amen. There will be no confusion in my mind who he is. Amen. Jesus said you can speak all the matter you wanted to about me. And he'll be forgiven. Don't you deal with that now. You leave that to law. So there's three separate beings there. Uh, you can combine them how you want to do it. I'm just telling you what the Bible said. Amen. But the word of God said, I'll not leave you comfortless. But I'll pray the Father and he'll send you another comforter. Amen. He will be with you. Have that comforter been with you more than the last two years? Amen. A year and a half and he's ever been before in your life. God, you know now why God. I visited you that night on the Thursday night here and filled you with that power. I can tell you something today, friend. You'll walk through the storms of life and he'll bring you through. You'll pray sometimes out of the ordinary. I know every preacher have all kinds of fodder for their messages. Get all you want to get, fellas. But I'm telling you what you need to do. You need to get down there and farm so far you like your knees with God and say, Lord, oh, put that man to preach in the back real. I'd like to have a little way to it. I watched a little 15 year old girl here last Thursday night have an experience. You know what? Tell her to do that. God's done it for her. I'll tell you one thing. When that little precious angel walked out that back door back yonder, she said, I've never felt nothing like this in my life. Let me tell you something right now. When young people go out here and smoke dope, they're doing it to get a high, get lifted up. When they shoot drugs in their brain, they're looking for something. Hey, man, to take away the darkness and the pain. Well, I'm here to tell you today, God has a power. Hey, man, if you'll get a hold of it just right, I'm going to let you know how I like it. Hey, man, to take you any higher than what God can do. I'm telling you, brother, you'll rob on the wings of the wind if you hang on to his hand. You'll never go through it. I'm telling that he won't stand by you. I'm telling you, I've been through the battle. I've been to the mountaintop. I've seen the things of God. And he's never left me. He's never put me away. He's always been my friend. And I'm just you, brother, brother, more than anybody in this whole wide world. I've got to close this morning, but I want to tell you, friend, my little sister back there, Sister Virginia, here a few good days ago, went through something and and I mean, it worried me. I love her. Her and her husband were some of the greatest supporters of me. Brother Ralph has been gone for, now for several years. But I'll tell you one thing. He left it up behind a lot of us young preachers can reach and get a hold of it and keep a hanging on. I've never been around a greater man than a tech man. My brother Ralph Norman was. He was an honest man. A good man. He lived a good life and set a good example for young preachers. He and his brother Durwood was on lots and lots of help. I told someone, they said, wonder something about me doing funerals. I said, well, I worked with the best. That's why. And I always paid attention and listened. I remember riding with brother from Sister Garner one time. I, I was going, and he said, you ride with me. I said, all right. He always treated me like I was his son. I just got in the back seat. He got to talking. Next thing I know it, I was right up in the middle of it. Had my head right in the middle of him and Sister Garner just listening up the storm. Amen. She went through something a few days ago. But when I looked up back there a while ago, I thought the joy of what seeing a friend means to me. Oh, listen. Listen. I didn't realize a lot of times when I was younger how much it meant. Amen. Somebody walked in the doors of the night and hadn't seen him in a long time. And I thought of the joy that swelled up in my heart. And I thought of the peace. Amen. I look around here today and see some folks that I hadn't seen in a while. Saw a young man back there. I hadn't saw him in a while. Made joy come to my heart. I want to tell you something, that friend. We're never, ever alone. We're never alone. He'll walk with you. He'll go with you through that emergency room. I never forget this as long as I live. In 2006, on oh, November the 9th, sitting right here on this, well, I had it coming to two church, had it in home, yeah, had it on Wednesday night, but I took it out on Thursday, sitting right down here, and I mean, just almost passed on out of here with a heart attack. Had a main artery blocked, and I, I knew it, was, I knew it, was, I didn't do something, was going to die, and so I had it took me out to the hospital, but never forget it. They got there, they checked and checked and checked, they hooked me up, electrodes. I thought it was going to explode any minute. You know, I never had all that duct to these things, so I, I didn't know. But anyway, they come in and said, you didn't have a heart attack. Well, we're going to put you to bed. I thought, that doesn't sound right. I ain't had a heart attack loose and let me go. I mean, don't hold me here. But Jeffrey, I, I stayed anyway. And they put me about 4.35 o'clock the next morning. They come walking in there. They won't call a bucket a doctor that was a hospitalist that stayed there. He come in and sat down on the bed. He said, you got a heart attack. And he said, uh, he said we got to do some things for you. Well, it immediately caused my whole life changed. Everything changed. First voice I heard said, what are you doing now, big boy? 
You don't preach no more. It's all over for you. You can call in the dog now because your race is over. But you know what? God didn't speak that to me. The magic was the voice of the enemy. Just like he has you, just like he has you. He's told you, you can't make that deal. You can't do this. You can't do that. But God said, yeah, when I hear from the Lord's when I, I know I answer. Well, the next day, there was a young lady. She came in there, and she was a taking care of me that day. And I never met that girl before in my life. And uh, she's married to this gentleman that runs a business over here, the petroleum business, whatever it is over on one-on-one, where you buy your fuel and stuff. That's her father. I didn't know it told her that she's married to his son. But that little girl walked up beside my bed. And she was to take care of me and check the blood pressure and all that stuff. She said, well, they come in the day to get you to take them to the heart cat lab. And she said, uh, you will uh, you have to go in there and do this. Well, I took it over on Joe Stinson. And uh, they took us in there and they're going to show us where they did that on Joe, baby. And I said, I told uh, Dr. Cabin and Dean, I said, excuse me, I don't think I need to go outside. Man, it looked like a four lane highway, an interstate. They showed his arteries and heart and all that stuff. My eyes crossed. I thought, if I'm going to get out of here, I'm leaving out of here right now. And so I stepped out in the hall. Well, I could study about all that and I never got so nervous in all my life. So I looked up that little girl and I said, uh, what's your name? She told me, I said, are you going to be my nurse all day? She said, yes, sir. I, I sure am. I'm going to be your nurse. My sister can tell you this is the truth. I said, well, I don't. I think what I want you to do. I want you to stay right beside me. Now. And I want you to go in there with me. And if they do something that ain't right, you stop it. You tell me, okay? She said, all right. Well, I got down there. And uh, they rolled me down there. I looked around. I said, where's my nurse go? They said, well, she can't go back there. I said, do what? I said, I, I paid for this ride, man. I said, I, I reckon I paid for that ride from up there down to here. And I'll when you go back and get that girl right now. They said, no, she's not, she's not trained to go on there. Well, the other day I looked around. She come back over there and she said, now, I'm sorry, Mr. Patrick. I said, I can't go on the phone as far as I can go. And she said, if you, if you come out before my time's up, I'll be right there to take care of you. Never felt so alone in my life. I guess that's childish, but that's as childish as me. You know, you like something. If I ain't for change. I, I, I do change clothes and all that, you know. <laughs> but I, I don't like change a lot. I'm not a big change. I'll drive a car. I've got an old white truck. I've got for 28 years. I've got an old van. I've got for 21 years. You know, I just, I just, if they drive and they run good, I just ain't much for change. I, I, I leave a wall 25 years like it is. It, I, just, I, I like it if somebody else goes out and change it, but I ain't much on change. But Brother Mac, I got back there, didn't know a soul back there, and, and all of the back there, I found out real quick I wanted a male nurse in there. I told that woman, I said, you can get me a man in here. I, I'd like to have a man in here. Well, they brought this brother in there, and he, he got talking about his daddy being a preacher. I said, here, let's just talk and you get done here now. Let's just make sure we get everything took care of it. Listen, we won't have nothing left undone or nothing. I'm down to the wicked, shaking on that bed and everything. But I said that to say this. That little girl had to leave me. That nurse that I liked, the nurse that I trusted, and nurse that gave me every shot, every blood pressure, all the pills that I had to take, she's right there with me. But she is gone. But you know what it tells me? Jesus goes beyond closed doors. They can't tell him he ain't qualified. They might tell that nurse she can't come back there. But Michael, when I went back behind them doors, there was somebody holding my hand. There was somebody taking a hold of me. And I'm telling you, he brought me out of there. When that doctor Lynn was put them stents in my heart, amen, I didn't have to wonder. I didn't have to worry. Amen, whether I was going to be all right. I knew I was in better hands. And if God took me out of there that day, it was going to be all right. I want the singers and musicians to come this morning. And we'll give you an invitation to pray. We'll go here in just a few minutes to be with the good folks over at the First Baptist Church on 4th Street. We're going to be with them. We're going to give you an opportunity. Amen. If you're here today and you feel like you're alone, you feel like there's nobody you know, I want to tell you Jesus is that He's there. He's never left us. He's never forsaken us. When I came out of that, that uh, room that day, they took me back to my room. There was a little nurse come up and stood beside my bed. Tears running in her face. She looked at me and she said, 